Hey guys, today I'm talking about one of the most critical things that your soil needs and your garden needs is calcium. I'm going to show you how to make the most bioavailable calcium you can make, but it's made with kitchen scraps. It's super easy to do. It just takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of knowledge of chemistry. So guys, what we are doing today, we're taking eggshells and we're taking the calcium in those eggshells and removing it through a chemical process and it's super easy to do. If you take eggshells and put it directly into your compost bin or in directly into the garden right at the base of your tomato plants or whatever you're growing out there, it could take years, possibly even more than a decade for this to completely break down and the calcium to become available for those vegetables. So eggshells are 95% calcium, but that calcium is not readily available until it's changed from one form of calcium into the other. So that's one thing to remember. Yes, there is a lot of calcium in eggshells, and it's one of the best places we can get from our kitchen through the scraps to go into our garden, but you have to go through a process to make it available to your plants. So the best practice in making this type of calcium is to make it in small batches and have it ready to mix when you're ready to add it to your plant. If you have it sitting on a shelf, there's a certain lifespan for it. So just remember it's best to have it in its powdered form until it's ready to go into the mix and then onto your plants, either through foliar feeding or through feeding at the base of the plant. Now, in addition to foliar feeding or drenching the plant right at the base, the root system, you can also add this to your compost pile or your compost bin, and that will work equally well for your calcium addition to your soil. So the simplest way I can put it is we are just making a very water soluble calcium that's easily absorbed by the plant, whether it's tomato, cucumber, or whatever else you have growing in the garden. Now calcium is great for the plant because it aids in the absorption of other nutrients to the plant. And so that's why it's so important to have really bioavailable calcium for your plants. Now a little known fact about having really good calcium in your soil is that once you harvest your vegetables it can actually aid in their lasting longer and they'll rot less quickly if you have the right amount of calcium in your soil and in the plant itself. So mixing these two ingredients and er almost everyone has this in their kitchen you're going to turn the calcium in these eggshells from calcium carbonate to calcium acetate and it's a huge difference in how they work in your plants. And just a note on I want to make sure I say this in case I forget it later on, but the formula is one tablespoon of the formula per gallon. And when you go to mix it, you're going to shake it a little bit and make sure that the formula is well mixed before you add it to that gallon of water. And you'll use that for foliar feeding and for drench watering at the base of each plant. So the simplest term, and I may use this during the video, and I don't want you to be confused if I use this abbreviation, which is W. SC water soluble calcium and that's basically what we're making is we're making WSC water solu soluble calcium today. So guys the first thing I did is I carefully washed these and allowed them to dry before I placed them in a paper bag and so we want these to be completely dry as much as possible but we're going to go through a couple of steps along the way to make sure the eggs are ready to go into the garden and as a foliar spray and an overall watering so guys, when you go to wash these, you want to use hot water to try to separate the egg from the interior membrane on the egg, which could eventually maybe, it could cause some issues later down the road. So it's better to just make sure that you wash the eggs first with really hot water. Now you don't want to store your eggs in a Ziploc type sandwich bag or freezer bag. You want to put it in a paper bag that allows the drying pro process to happen. Also in the bag with the eggshells, you might put some paper towels that also absorb some of that moisture. And if you want to use, a, so I had some people tell me they used cotton swabs in there as well. And that also helped absorb the moisture. You can take the top of the bag and fold it in that paper towel and those cotton swabs will absorb that moisture pretty quickly. Now it was summertime when I was drying the eggs and we had our AC going. So the air was fairly dry from the AC, you know, drying out your air, which it does naturally. But if you have a lot of humidity in your house, you can put them in the fridge and that dry air in the fridge will also help aid in that drying process. So a quick note about tomatoes and blossom in rot, and there's a little bit of debate as to why this happens, but most of the time it's because the plant is not able to get calcium into it. There may be calcium in the soil, but it might not be bioavailable. So that's one thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to do a foliar feeding and a drenching with this calcium acetate which can be absorbed more readily into the tomato plant. So if you've ever, ever wondered why your tomatoes have this problem, 
that's probably it. You may have lots of calcium in the soil. You may add it to the soil. You may have put eggshells there, but it's just not available to your tomatoes. So whatever vegetable we're talking about, when it starts producing fruit, more calcium is required in the plant to do that properly. And that's why you might have that issue with blossom in right on tomatoes and other issues with other types of vegetables if they're not getting the proper amount of calcium. And that's why foliar feeding is so critical during those months when you're growing your tomatoes and other vegetables that they're feeded cal feed you're feeding them calcium regularly to help with that process. Now this step we're about to do, once you process the eggshells into this powder, it's very easy to store it in your kitchen. You don't want to leave it outside in your greenhouse or somewhere there's going to be a lot of humidity. You want it to be a, in a dry area that will keep the powder as dry as possible and it will last quite a while in storage, possibly months, even years, as long as the solution, the powder, doesn't get wet. Now there's a couple of reasons we're doing this in an oven. One obviously is to dry and the next I'll talk about later about why you're doing this with your eggshells in an oven. But we're going to do about 250 degrees for about two hours in your oven and we're going to put that in there and through the magic of editing it'll happen in a matter of seconds. Okay so it's been about two hours and our eggshells have cooled down and they're ready to go on to the next step and we will do that now. Now the next step, we're gonna take these and crush them down by hand into the smallest pieces we can in a container. So next we're gonna take our eggshells and we're gonna put them in a blender or coffee grinder. I'm gonna do half and half just to test which one works better, but this is just a smoothie blender and this is just a very old coffee grinder. So I'm gonna try one of each, 50-50, and see which one works better because I've heard some people say only a smoothie blender will work. Some people say a coffee blender, or excuse me, a coffee grinder works better. So we're gonna try a 50-50 mix and see which one produces our powder a little better. Okay, we're gonna take about 50% of our eggshells and put them into the coffee grinder and start doing that process and see which one turns it into a finer powder for our method here. Let's open it up and see if we have a fine powder. It is definitely putting off. I wouldn't say it was a super fine powder, but it is a much finer grain than it was when we started with just the grounds. But I don't think this is as fine as I want it. So we're now we're going to try we're going to try the smoothie blender and see if that works better. All right, we're going to take the rest of our eggshells and try to carefully transfer those to our blender cup just try not to make a huge mess here so and we may have to re-add the ones we use from the coffee maker if this works better so we're gonna put this all back together and through the magic of editing we'll do this really quick and you'll see the results in just a second All right, let's take a look and see exactly what we have in the cup. And that is definitely more of a powder. I'll try to let you see that. There's still a few pieces in there that's not quite blended perfectly. And I do see some of the, this is the, the inner so I think that did make it into a powder quite a bit better. As you can see, this is really a fine powder. There's a couple of pieces of eggs still left in there. And I'm going to do a little bit more blending, but I think overall the puree blender worked better than my coffee grinder. So sorry about the excess sun. It's the end of the day and we're getting a lot of extra light in the greenhouse. One thing that I did notice is I was blending. It wasn't turning into a fine powder that I wanted. Previously, I had used a, set, a different blender. One thing I noticed about this blender is I needed to turn it on its side and tilt it back up and that helped it mix a little bit better because a lot of the heavier material will settle at the bottom and the blades were not cutting it into that fine powder. So just remember, you may have to do a little bit of, ex a little bit of experimentation to get it into that fine powder that's going to be absorbed so much easier. All right, what I've done is I've taken a mason jar and I've labeled it with some painter's tape with the fact that it is powdered eggshells. And I put the date on there so we'll know. 
So we're going to take this, and it is really a fine powder now. So I do believe that a coffee grinder may work okay, but I think the blender works so much better. And you can see it truly is just a very fine powder that I'm getting into the air, and it's not toxic to breathe, but you probably don't want eggshells in your lungs. So I'm just going to put that in there. We've got nearly... We've got nearly a full container of eggshell powder. I'm going to try to get it a little closer to the camera. And you can see there are no visible eggshells in there. Now it's just like a baby powder consistency. So you can see that it's exactly the way we want it. So that's what your goal is, is to turn your eggshells into a very, very fine powder. And it can be stored in your kitchen pantry very easily, and you'll know exactly what it is. So a little bit of this mixture goes a long way. You're only going to use one part of your eggshells, one part to 10 part vinegar. Now you don't have to have white vinegar. You can use uh, different types of vinegar, apple cider, apple cider vinegar, uh, any type of vinegar you have, as long as it's a, a, a acidic level between two and three pH. So the ratios to mixing this is one part powdered eggshell to 10 parts vinegar. And you can use whatever type of vinegar you have, whether it's rice vinegar or apple cider vinegar. I just have some plain white distilled vinegar. So we're going to do one to 10 ratio there. And I'm going to mix that now and show you the chemical reaction that's going to take place, which changes it from calcium carbonate to calcium acetate. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add roughly an ounce of our eggshell. And you can see that is an extremely fine powder now. I'm going to add that to our container. And we have 10 ounces of our vinegar. And I'm going to try to do a super close-up so you can see this really well, the chemical process taking place. And as you can see, there's carbon dioxide being released from this reaction. And that is perfectly normal. You just want to make sure that it's in a container that's not too small and if you look closely I'll try to move that back so you can see it actually happening right there that is the chemical process taking place right there so guys as you can see it doesn't take a lot of our powdered eggshell to really produce this foamy substance on the top so just remember you want your container to be large enough or you're going to have a really big mess if you're doing this in the kitchen so just remember have a secondary container handy just in case you have a massive overflow from the chemical reaction okay guys we are going to have to have a secondary container around this because you can see that it is really starting to fill my mason jar and so i'll have to put this in a secondary container i didn't think it would have this big of a reaction but you can see this works really interesting when you know a little bit about chemistry you're basically making like the volcano you might have made when you were a kid in science class it's the same type of reaction with baking powder and you can see this happening very quickly so i'm going to look for another container so guys one more thing to remember is don't put a lid on whatever container you're using because if it's glass the pressure could build up and shatter the glass so you'd have an even bigger problem and i don't want you to get injured there so just remember let it do the reaction if you have to put it in a larger container as i've done do that, but don't seal it where the pressure won't have anywhere to escape. So guys, the reason I started this in the mason jar, I just wanted you to be able to see the chemical reaction because it's kind of neat. But what I'm going to put it in is a larger container and allow that process, and I'm going to rinse it out and make sure we get all of our remaining eggshell debris into this larger container. But one thing to remember is this process will take anywhere from seven to 10 days for it to completely transform the calcium that's available, most going to be most available for your tomatoes, cucumbers, whatever else you want to apply it to, house plants, anything. So just remember, give it that seven day period. And also you're going to want to wrap a cloth around the top of this because you don't want fruit flies starting or any other type of insect that's going to cause a problem. So just remember, cover the top and just allow the, the uh, process to breathe and you won't have any exploding containers in your kitchen. So guys, after that one to two week period has taken place, you're going to expect your solution to look like one or two percent milk. It's still going to have a water consistency, but it's going to have the clarity of that one or two percent milk product you buy at the grocery store, or possibly something like 
oat milk or something like that. So you just want to remember you're going to have to give it that seven to 10 day period before this process completely finishes taking place before you move on to the next step. So for foliar feeding and your root drenching, you're going to do about one ounce per gallon. You cannot use this at full strength because there's too much vinegar in there. It's going to be way too strong. So you want to dilute it one ounce per gallon. I want to say that twice because you will quickly kill your tomato cucumber. Then you, once you've diluted in the water, you can do your foliar feeding or direct watering. So guys, once you've mixed your solution up, you can put it in a misting sprayer and spray your leaves on your tomatoes, undersides, top, everywhere. Then you can go back in and do a drenching at the base of your plant right at the bottom and just add some directly to the base and that will feed it in both possible ways. The root system and the foliar feeding will really help your tomato and it will stop that blossom end rot and your tomato will be healthier overall. Now you can also mix this in a five gallon bucket and just drench your composting bin or your worm composter and that will aid in that as well. It will help the worms, it will help the soil, and it will just be a better soil once it makes it back to your garden. So just remember, you're not limited to mixing small batches. It just depends on how many eggshells you started with. Now I mentioned worm composting, and if you don't have a worm composter, it is super easy to make one. It costs about $25, and it will be one of the best things you can do for your garden because you can take your kitchen scraps and turn those into garden gold. I made a video about that, and I'll link that up above as well. Now I've talked before about adding eggshells directly to your garden and after doing a lot of studying and research, I realized that those eggshells do not break down very quickly. Sometimes it can take years and years and some people have said that they dug in a certain area of their garden where they had placed eggshells and they still had not broken down after 20 years. So turning your eggshells into this powder is going to speed the process up by up to a thousand times what it would be naturally. So you can add your eggshell powder directly to your worm composter or to your garden. But it, like I said, the process of that changing it from calcium carbonate to calcium acetate, you've got to have the vinegar solution and you can't do that directly. So if you want to add that to your worm composting pile or your worm composter, that will be a great thing to do as well. But just remember that the process does take a lot longer. So you want to add the foliar spray once the flowers have formed on your tomatoes, cucumbers, whatever vegetable it is. Once that happens, then you're going to spray it with your solution. So you're going to do the foliar spray about once every two weeks during the entire fruiting season of the vegetable or tomato, cucumber, whatever you have, cantaloupes, watermelons, whatever it is, once every two weeks is the ideal time to add it and spray it on the foliar feeding and maybe a little bit less to the root system unless you're having a really dry season and that will help with watering is you can just do that watering with a small watering can with your solution already added to it. Now some people recommend doing the eggshells on a stove top. I like doing them in the oven for two reasons. I think it's easier to dry them if your eggs are not completely dry. A couple of hours in the oven at that temperature will definitely dry your eggshells. Also it makes it a little bit easier to pulverize your eggs because if you're doing it on the stove top they might not get quite as heated as quickly and they're more likely to burn on the stovetop. Now I've had people ask me over the years, can you make it in a stronger solution in, in the mixture such as two, three, or even 4%. I would recommend if you do that, do a test on a one plant because you don't want to do your entire garden with it too strong and it would cause a problem. So yeah, two, three, maybe four ounces, but do a test on one plant and wait seven to 10 days to see what the results are. Now, if you have sandy or fast draining soil, that could be a perfect environment to have lower calcium in your soil. So just remember, if you're near a coastal area or you have a lot of sand in your soil, it's going to drain quicker and there's more likely that you're going to have a calcium deficiency in that soil. Clay is the best type of soil for retaining calcium. So if you have heavy clay soil, you may have other problems with the soil, but you're going to have probably more calcium in the soil although it may not be as bioavailable, and that's why the foliar feeding is such a great idea for your plants. So the mixture itself can last two to three months, but so that's why you just wanna remember, you, only want, you really only wanna mix what you're gonna use for that particular week or two, and then you can mix up a new batch, and that's why I just recommend keeping it in the powder form. You mix it as you go, as you would with a lot of other types of fertilizer, and you just don't have it sitting in the container. Always remember to shake well when you mix to make sure that the mixture stays really fluid because it might settle down 
if it sits for a long time, if you have it sitting on a shelf, you just want to pick it up and shake it before you do your spraying because even though it is a fine powder, well, of course, you've seen a lot of things that have fine powders that are going to settle to the bottom. Now, I mentioned earlier in the video why there are more than one reason to put it in the oven. One, of course, is drying, but the other, it makes the chemical process easier to extract the phosphorus once you go into that mixture process. So just remember, the oven, for me, I believe works better than the stovetop. You can do either one, but I think you're going to have an additional benefit being able to extract that phosphorus into your liquid. Now, if you have a huge garden and this type of sprayer is too small, I'll have a backpack sprayer that I use that's battery powered. It's a lot easier to use. I'll link one of those down below as well as this, as this small solo sprayer. But as far as spraying an entire garden at once, it's a lot easier with a backpack sprayer that's battery operated, especially in the heat of summer where you're having to struggle to get through everything. It makes it a heck of a lot easier to use a battery powered one. So guys, I hope you'll do this for at least one season to see what kind of results you get. I think you're going to be surprised at the quality of vegetables you get and also so many more benefits. There's even some talk that it changes the taste slightly and makes your vegetables more appetizing. So guys, I hope I didn't leave anything out, but if I did, please leave it in the comments if there's something you've discovered doing this method, if you've tried it before. And also, if there's anything that I've, you think I've done wrong, please let me know too, because I'm always researching and studying this method. This is something I've just started in the last couple of years, and I've seen some really amazing results, and I think you will too. So guys, I hope you like and subscribe if you got something out of the video, and have a great day.